Hey, Sam. Thanks for having me on. For the benefit of our, our viewers, I just want you to kind of set the scene for us for Broken Monsters. Give us a synopsis. Well, it's a novel that's set in Detroit, and it opens with a very strange murder where a uh, young boy is found, and he's been somehow connected to a deer. So he looks, it's kind of a myth, very mythological image, very much a pan figure. And the detective Gabriela Versado has to deal with this, and she's never seen anything like this before. And the story kind of follows five different characters who are all kind of involved in the case in some way. Uh, her daughter, Layla, uh, who's been very involved in social media and catfishing a pedophile. Um, a homeless man called TK, who's trying to hold everything together. Jono, a young journalist uh, who's trying to make his big comeback on social media and YouTube. And, of course, the killer. You know, the other thing, I, I've got to be honest with you, I, I just wondered, Lauren, at some point, which of the characters did you enjoy creating the most? Because you talked about Jono. Jono is kind of takes himself too seriously. You've got TK, mm -hmm. the homeless guy, who has a deeper sense of himself. You've got Gabby, who is trying to deal with her daughter, Layla, and dealing with her own life and her issues. And then you didn't mention Jen Q, who I, I hope I could meet a girl like Jen in real life. <laughs> She's, Jen Q is very cool. Uh, Jono's girlfriend, who is completely unappreciated. I think I had the most fun writing Layla, the, the teenage daughter, and that kind of mother-daughter relationship was really interesting to play out. And, you know, after The Shining Girls, the novel in The Shining Girls stopped in 1993 because I didn't want to have to deal with the internet. And it was so nice mm. to have the whole of the internet back and to write a book which is so much about how we interact with the world right now and especially how we live online. Lauren, there's a, you know what, forgive me for saying this, but there's a cockiness, a self-assurance in this offering that I feel you've poured into your characters. Now, I don't know if that is because of where you are in your personal space, the success of Shining Girls, but I feel that each of them, there's a cockiness in them in, in one way or another. Am I wrong? No, I think, that's, I think that's fairly accurate, but I think you'll find that in a lot of my books. You know, I think Kirby and the Shiny Girls had that. I think Zinzi in Zoo City had it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there, there is a wit, and we have, to, we have to have a cockiness and a wit to be able to deal with the darkness, to be able to look at the horrendous things which happen with a sense of humor and a warmth and humanity. You, you bring two interesting aspects for me because I, I'm a bit on the fence and I've been reading some of the reviews from the fans. Can you clear up the mystery for us before I continue talking more about why Detroit and your fascination with Detroit and, and The Shining Girls of Chicago? Is this a horror or a thriller or is it in the middle? What is it? I would call it crossover. I think it's probably, you know, I, I think the most interesting things mash up different genres. Um, you know, I think about Christopher Nolan's movies like Inception. Um, there's definitely an element of the fantastic to it, but it's also, it's very much rooted in the real world. And I think, you know, as soon as you start attaching labels like horror, uh, it means, it kind of puts some people off. So I would say crossover thriller. <laughs> okay, crossover thriller. Talk to me about your fascination now, because I know with The Shining Girls, you spend a lot of time in Chicago and America, traveling around and, and getting a, the lay of the land. Here... Uh, I've never been to Detroit, but I get there's intimate little nuances about the city that you kind of create in different images, whether it's, um, the, his name escapes me now, but uh, I think it's Clayton when he goes into the shop to buy something. I get a sense that I've seen it, although I've never encountered it. Talk to me about just making sure that the authenticity of the, of the backdrop stays real. Well, I spent a few weeks in Detroit on two different research trips. And it is very important to me to get those details accurate. I've seen South Africa misrepresented so many times in popular culture. You know, I think this new Adam Sandler movie, which I haven't seen, but I hear is just dreadful. It's really important to me to have the authenticity and the integrity to make sure that the city is actually fairly represented, that it's not just kind of, oh, Detroit, this terrible place, and all the buildings are completely destroyed and awful, and there's poverty and despair. There is all of that. And they've recently cut off the water in Detroit. They're appealing to the UN for help. Mm. Um, so it's a crazy city, but at the same time, there's a life and a vitality there. And there's, there's an incredible art scene. Um, and I wanted to get at that as well, to really fairly represent the city. But it was fun, like, you know, hanging out with Detroit homicide detectives and theater geek teenagers and going into abandoned buildings. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of time walking around talking to people and, and hanging out with interesting folk. 
Lauren, final 15 seconds. Why are we going to enjoy this book? If you haven't picked it up, why are you going to enjoy it? I think it's a compelling snapshot of where we are right now. Um, there is a gruesome murder to kind of carry you through and maybe a few more gruesome murders along the way. But it's fundamentally about people and how we're all a little bit broken inside. Um, but it's how you come through that and how to, how, to, how to be a better person and not be a monster. Lauren, we're going to leave it there. And I'm sure you might get some comments on social media just asking what's happening in your personal space. But it's a really, really, really good read. That was international best-selling author of Shining Girls. Lauren Bierkes with her latest novel called Broken Monsters. It's available everywhere.